Hey everybody, Mo here, and today I'm bringing you guys another video of Meta Monday. So it's the first Meta Monday of the new patch of the new season. So we're going to go and look over and see what decks kind of popped off for this first week. See how they did. See if the, how the new champions are doing. Uh, spoiler alert, they're all doing great. Uh, well, except for Varus, but Bane and Seraphine are doing great. And yeah, we're just going to look to see what the most played decks are, how they're doing, what the counter matchups are, stuff like that. So uh, before we get into the video, I wanted to remind you guys that 68% of the people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to me. So if you could do me a huge, huge favor, click that subscribe button, comment down below for all of that stuff for the YouTube algorithm. We're extremely close to hitting 8,000 subs. I think we're like 200 off or something. So that would be absolutely an insane uh, uh, milestone to hit. So if you could do all that stuff to help me out reach that YouTube algorithm number, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. And last but not least, join the Discord down below. It's the number one place for competitive LOR. A lot of people were um, joined last uh, season. And a lot of people were hitting uh, like Masters for the first time, Diamond for the first time, they were Prime Glorying for the first time, making Seasonals, qualifying for Seasonals even for their first time. And uh, Discord is just a huge place for people to kind of join together, share the decks they're playing, share what's working for them, say what's not working for them. And it was just a nice way to help you know each other out grow and kind of test things out and find whatever decks fit for them. So if you're interested in competitive LOR, it's the number one place for competitive LOR. And the link to that Discord is going to be down in the Discord channel below. Now, that's going to be it for the intro. Let's get into the actual deck. So uh, for those of you that are new to uh, Meta Mondays, we're basically just going to look at the top eight most played decks, kind of give you an idea of what the meta looks like um, so you can know what to expect to play and then maybe give you an idea of a couple decks that, you know, would be really, really good for you if you're trying to ladder climb right now. So number one, Vayne Gwynn. Uh, Vayne Gwynn, pretty solid deck. Um, Prodigy has named this deck Bruce Gwynn uh, because it's like spooky shadow isle stuff and then gwyn and vane is gwyn um yeah that's a seasonal champion for you ladies and gentlemen he thinks he's hilarious so this deck is pretty cool it uh abuses the new uh opulent foyer or foyer i don't know how to how you say that uh the foyer sounds fancier so we're gonna go with that and yeah basically you just get really big um hollow triggers and then vein gets you a free rally every turn so every turn you're threatening some insane amounts of damage and then um yeah that's ideal uh one thing that i think people are building it i i will say so uh I'll, i guess so i want to say an asterisk because for those of you many of you know that i'm playing in worlds in a couple weeks worlds qualifier in about three weeks so there are a bunch of things that i want to tell you guys that i feel like i really can't in the sense of I don't want to like screw over my teammates that have worked really hard on specific techs in decks. And I also don't want to screw over myself. Um, if there are specific techs in decks that I feel like people aren't playing or aren't doing correctly. Um, but I will say that we've basically come to the conclusion that a lot of these Vayne decks are just built really poorly. Or these like Vayne Gwyn decks are built pretty poorly. And there's like a couple really key cards that people are just missing out on and if you would include those couple key cards this deck gets so 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 much better but yeah that's all i'll say i'm not gonna say exactly what what text there if you figure them out yourselves congrats and then obviously you can share it on twitter or share it wherever you want and say like oh i found this you know in incredibly you know secret tech but like a lot of these decks are just missing uh a couple like really key tech cards that take this deck from like a 51 percent win rate deck to like a 55 plus percent win rate deck so yeah so vain gwen insanely strong the idea is you just get big uh hollow triggers or you can make your gwen or your uh gwen attack multiple times you can uh like i said this uh opulent foyer is such a good card also i know it's pronounced foyer i was just i was just trying to trigger you guys but opulent foyer insanely good card you get your hollowed stacks up insanely fast if you rally with the opulent foyer in play you um you can get another ghastly band because it's just whenever you get the attack token so you can like rallies um some decks play scout units or the scout weapon and you could rally onto the scout unit or scout weapon get uh, a ghostly band scout attack you get the atta uh, attack token again you get another ghastly band and it just gets out of hand really really quickly number two is not a new deck and i believe number two is the only deck in this top eight that doesn't have a new champion correct so not a, not really a new deck but there is a new addition that makes this deck really really good and that is not even included in this deck list okay let's look at the most successful anti-gent player 
Oh, they're not even including it in the deck list. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I was wrong. I was assuming that this deck was really good because it got access to the Witness. Um, but maybe I'm just wrong and the Witness is a bad card and nobody's playing it. Oh, okay. It looks like literally nobody is playing it. All right. Well, then I guess it's it's actually just uh, just Annie Jin, just OG Annie Jin. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I thought people were playing the Witness, especially over like a Arachnoid Century. Because Arachnoid Century is a 3 mana, you know, 3 2 stun a card. The Witness, I believe, is a 4 mana, 3 3 stun a card. But if you uh, flow, it only costs 2. So it's a 2 mana, 3 3 stun a unit. Um, and p I think people are forgetting that flow also counts for skills. So if you like uh, Boom Crew Rookie and Saboteur and Attack, then you activate Flow. And then now you can just play a two mana stun card on the next turn or on your defensive turn if you just go like um sigil of malice into like where's it at uh demolitionist or something or like demolitionist tusk speaker that like there you go you hit flow um or if you like just do one skill and then it activates your gin and then your gin does its skill then boom there you go you trigger flow and there's like a bunch of ways you can trigger flow on your defensive turns so that way on your offensive turn you can um i just have two mana three three stun the unit it's basically just like a better arachnoid century um so that's what i thought uh people were playing uh but i guess i'm wrong i guess it's just straight up anti gin and it's nothing new or impressive but cool number two it's just it seems like aggro deck being good on bad decks Number three is another Vayne deck. So, and this one is Vayne Rumble. So, the idea behind this deck is you have a Legionary Charge, can tutor out a 5 plus power ally. You only play one and it's Rumble. So, you guarantee hit Rumble every single game because you're playing six of them. Reminds you a lot of the like Mono Kaisa style decks where you get to play six Kaisas because you're playing the three Kaisas and then you're playing three of the, um, the zero mana tutor out uh right of calling yeah you play right of calling so you play get to play six kaisa well this way you get to play six rumble because you're playing legionary charge and rumble and this is pretty solid you get free attacks with uh vein and rumble consistently so you can level up rumble really quickly um a lot of curves i've had where i've just gone like um i've literally gone pass on turn one pass on turn two play a vein uh on turn four play a rumble do rain tumble or vein tumble uh attach great hammer onto rumble swing and then just do normal swing and then you have leveled rumble on four um and a and you get the um mecha yordle because the impact and stuff will trigger it and get you the mecha yordle so i've leveled rumble on four a couple of times uh, that's not really the best curve most of the time but the fact that you can do that is pretty silly to me um another thing you can do with them is just get you know uh, what are these? The Reforges or good discard fodder. Fallen Riders good discard fodder. Um, again, you know, Reforge, Reforge. Uh, all these things are good discard fodder. And then that gives you things to actually discard with the Rumble. You're not sad about it. Uh, Cataclysm, something you'll also notice in the Vayne Gwyn deck is a lot of these uh, Demacia decks are playing Cataclysm now um, because you really need to be able to deal with Seraphine. And so this has Cataclysm. I know some decks are playing like Condemn or Bloody Business in the Rumble decks even. Just because you really, really, really need to have a way to kill Seraphine on site. If you don't, you basically lose the game because Seraphine is really broken and just runs away with the game immediately. So being able to kill off that Seraphine um, or the Ezreal, mostly the Seraphine immediately is really, really strong. Being able to kill off the opponent Vayne immediately is very, very strong um so yeah being being able to have interaction is really 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 good now in these um uh noxus decks or in these like vein decks demacia decks so number four another vein deck vein pantheon so vein pantheon is basically just going to be fewer pantheon but you play vein instead of fewer like literally that's it um this deck is really bad what the fuck don't don't play this version of the deck what hello where are the fish fights there we go fish fight uh this version is a little better but still not great um again not gonna leak too many i guess of the super text deck building um but basically it's not a secret you should be playing three fish fight this card is absolutely broken like this card is not even close to being balanced i don't know why they gave us two mana concerted strike but um 
This is also kind of why the reason I think Fiora Pantheon is still better than Vayne Pantheon, because with the addition of fish fights, you get, uh, and the spell shield, this could, that can actually just turn into an old Fiora deck where you're just like winning with Fiora win condition consistently. I know when I prepped a lot with Prodigy, he was telling me that people were playing Fiora Pantheon wrong last season majority of the time and people were like oh it's a pantheon deck it's a pantheon deck it's a pantheon deck and they would never really play for that fiora win con whereas prodigy played for that fiora win con often and taught me you know like hey you know this thing is still a threat and people just aren't like they don't respect fiora and people aren't other people aren't playing fiora as a way to be respected so it kind of leads into the circle of like well the average fiora pantheon player doesn't treat Fiora as like a real win condition therefore the people playing against the average Fiora Pantheon don't think Fiora is a threat and it just like is this big cycle um whereas now with fish fight single you still play concerted you now have spell shield even uh, you have a thing that gives your Fiora tough like and on top of that you still can get quick attack weapon and stuff like that um this is really 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 just a perfect setup for fiora so i think vein pantheon is nice just because vein is like a really really strong card and people are playing it because she's new and cool but i'm pretty sure fiora pantheon is still strictly better especially now that you have even more ways to just level your fiora really really well so very very solid deck nothing really new to it other than you, people just swapped out vein for fiora and fish fight fish fight's broken i don't know what the fuck this list is that's telling you to play i don't know how runeter ar gets you these lists but i say this every week don't take this list right here where it says show deck drop down to find the most successful players and see what their deck lists are it's like oh look two fish fights oh look zero fish fights so don't copy that one but it does play cataclysm pretty good it's like, oh, look, no fish fights. That's fine. This guy's an EU idiot, so don't listen to EU people. Zero fish fight. Okay, I guess these people are just dumb. Just don't. Uh, two fish fights. There you go. King shit. Don't. Just play fish fight, man. Most successful person's playing two fish fights. Fish fight is absolutely broken. I don't know why these people aren't playing fish fights, but yeah, just, just copy this guy. Number one. He's the number one player for a reason. Uh, number five. So we're halfway done. Number five, Seraphine. Seraphine Ezreal, Seraphine Noxus, the, the Coolio OTK style deck. Um, yeah, nothing really to it. This is just first of many Seraphine decks. They all do the exact same fucking thing. They all just get infinite value from Seraphine. Um, a lot of them play Barkeep to continue the infinite like uh, value. But this is the only Seraphine deck that doesn't play Barkeep. I think you just don't have the room for it in your deck really because you're trying to level up uh, Ezreal so when you play Ezreal you have to play things like Static Shock and Violent Discord um but yeah so this uh this deck is very much just like stall and then you play Seraphine you get a Seraphine in play you play leveled Ezreal and then the minute your opponent does anything you respond by burst killing them from like 20 HP and it's just not okay in the slightest so We'll see what like the best players here are building. If there's anything crazy or different. Yeah, so you see the best players are on a little bit less stock list. You see it's a little bit more new cards, more one ofs. They have like one of Telstones, one of Rummage, one of Main Decked High Note, Time Trick, uh, Aftershock, Scorched Earth. So a bunch more one ofs. I think this is probably going to be more correct. This one does play the back alley bar. So this one also plays the back alley. Oh, this just looks like the exact same deck, probably like copied off of each other um this one also plays back alley bar so okay maybe the this deck is playing back alley bar it's just that main version was not um the continued infinite value but yeah this deck is basically just stall 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 it's just old karma ezreal if you guys remember it back in beta karma ezreal where you would stall till turn 10 get a karma in play get an ezreal in play just burst speed kill your opponent this is the same thing except you don't have to wait till turn 10 you can pop off as early as turn 8 i have 20 to 0 somebody on turn 8 so uh, like at burst speed 20 to 0 them so this deck is just Karma Ezreal, but literally just strictly power crept. And you don't have to wait till turn 10, turn 11 to pop off anymore. You can pop off as early as turn 7, turn 8, turn 9. So very, very cool deck. Very cool deck. Coming at number 6, Vayne Zed. So Vayne Zed, another really strong deck. Um, again, not going to go into it too much, but I think people are building this deck horrendously bad. And even with the deck being built horrendously bad, it is still putting up really, really insane numbers. Like, so it's 55% win rate. People are still getting 80% win rate. Um, and these are with just atrociously built versions. Like, Ghost, Combat... Stop putting Combat Cook in this deck. Just stop. Stop putting Combat Cook in this deck. It's not good. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I'll say for the actual deck building and tech versions. People are like, what? Memory, what is this? 
fuck is this, man? No, don't do that. So, yeah, uh, this deck is just being built extremely poorly, but it's still putting up insane numbers. So that's how you know a deck is really good. When people are putting up insane numbers, like 80% win rate on decks um, with bad versions of it, then you know it's probably a really good deck. So uh zane uh vane said i really like this deck this is probably my favorite deck right now from the expansion um just strictly because i love these rally like i love small demacia decks i love small demacia rally style decks um that's been my forte for a very long time people call me the Demo or the decimate guy for some reason but i've probably cast way more rallies than i've cast decimates in my life um and i like literally won a seasonal championship off of the back of a deck almost like extremely similar to this is you have to play lulu z so lulu z elusive rally style killings um and yeah it's really really so like what is what is this man who drew momentous are your only spells three rallies like what don't yeah, okay so i don't know where they're getting this no flame to rune terror ar because they're an amazing site stop don't use this i i've decided i'm never using the show deck button again just go click on the number one person number top like top two people decide what deck list you want to play and make your own deck list that's like a version of the two combined or something i don't know don't don't use this button i don't know how they're getting these decks but don't use that button number seven auction Varus. so it's the first Varus deck we have here and i'm gonna stop clicking on that button because that button's baiting me so first Varus deck we have here it's Varus uh auction this deck is kind of similar to pantheon auction uh from last season except instead of using pantheon as your win condition you have Varus here so you're still just playing the nice um <clears throat> Like you get to play for uh for Sigma Bukai, but now you get other stuff. So you get like the Lunari Cultist, you get Keeper of the Bucks, you have a nice anti-aggro if you need it. And yeah, basically the idea of this is you just level up your Varus really quickly or your Uction because um even though Uction so the people were pairing Varus with Pantheon because they're like, oh well they have the same level up condition. Pantheon wants you to target allies six times and Varus wants you to target was it eight times or something? Yeah. Varus wants you to target them eight times. It's like, well, really, Auction also has that same uh, level of condition, except he doesn't say it here. Um, Auction makes the Warlord's Palace, which has uh, countdown eight, and you uh, advance it by targeting allies. So really, they're also the same level of condition. So why play the bad Pantheon card when you can play the good Auction card? And yeah, so people are pairing these together. You like hyper level your Auction. You get, uh, where is it? Uh, you pop off with, hello? Wait, is this deck not playing uh, the Overwhelm spell? I can't even think of the name of it. Am I crazy here? Oh yeah, the Absolver. Was this deck not playing Absolvers? Oh, what a crackhead no absolvers here yeah usually typically you play the deck with absolvers and you also get to play a couple of the um make your opponent take double damage which this guy was playing the curse of the tomb so you can just like pump up your units really big varus already has built-in overwhelm or you can buff up the auction really big with overwhelm your opponent goes to block or something and then you just go okay curse of the tomb you're now all of a sudden taking double damage which is pretty sick um, yeah, and that's the idea behind this deck is you just want to make really big auction, really big Varus. So it's it's literally just like playing auction Pantheon from the last set, except you're playing Varus auction instead of uh, Pantheon auction. And the last deck we're going to talk about is Seraphine Victor, another Seraphine deck. Woo! Um, this is the like very beta style. This was like Mach 1 of Seraphine deck before people realized what good Seraphine decks look like. I don't think this deck is necessarily bad. Yeah, it has like 53% win rate. So it's not necessarily bad. It's just definitely not nearly as good as what people thought it was going to be. This was like when people saw Seraphine, the first thing they thought of was like, oh, Seraphine Victor Ionia. And so this is just like the day zero beta, you know, like early access builds of Seraphine. Um, it's also why I think it's all the way down at number eight. It's probably not gonna, it's definitely not gonna be here by next week's Meta Monday um, because people have kind of dropped the Ionia package and just realized like, hey, the Shadow Isle package, pretty good. Hey, this Noxus OTK package, pretty good. Because the main downfall with this version is you can't deal with the opponent uh, Seraphine and that's a big no-no. If you can't, you have to have a way to kill Seraphine in this meta. Um, and the fact that this deck does, just doesn't have removal at all really, like you have mystic shots cool but that's it uh is really really bad when you're playing into like demacia decks like the entire meta right now is demacia decks and seraphine decks so if you don't have a way to kill seraphine and you don't have a way to kill vein or just really any big demacia champ that's killing you like or vein zed rumble 
then like their your deck is just bad and that's really what the seraphine victor ionia deck is is people played it realized like oh shit this vein card broken oh shit these seraphine card broke it um we need to have ways to answer those and this deck just straight up does not have an answer to those cards and that's a pretty big issue um so i would probably stay stare away from this if you really wanted a, a seraphine deck that wasn't seraphine ezreal you could play seraphine shadow isles this deck's pretty solid um because this deck plays two sometimes three quietus so you really really have a good way to kill the opponent seraphine you also just play straight up vengeance your opponent can't really do much against that um yeah so this deck is very solid it's going to beat the aggro decks even harder um like the matchup tables it's really good against like just it's going to be better into the demacia decks it's not going to be great but it's going to be better for sure like see here like it's it's okay into like this vein deck this aggro deck like this oh poppy rally you know deck this demacia rally deck so again it's not going to be great because you still like see you still lose to pantheon but uh vein like you still lose to vein decks over here but it's going to be a lot better but yeah those are going to be the top eight most played decks for this patch uh so far in this first week i know this is a lot longer of a video but the early ones are because i typically have to explain the decks or explain the new cards and explain why they're doing so well why they're being played so much so hopefully um this helped you guys out this helps you guys understand what to expect if you're going out there and you're going to play on ladder this week and you're going to try and you know climb going to try and grind this weekend this will give you an idea of what to play also um I will be doing a sweaty Thursday again starting this Thursday. I didn't do one last week because uh, one, the gauntlet didn't count towards the um, upcoming seasonals, which is like four months away or something like that. But also we were like two days into the patch and there was no telling. Like literally all I would have been telling you guys if you legitimately wanted to climb and win this weekend would have been to just play like Seraphine, like play whatever the best seraphine deck at the time was this will give us a little bit more of a time so i can give you an actual good answer and a more in-depth answer of what decks to play if you want to climb over the weekend and stuff like that um so yeah so sweaty watch out for sweaty thursday coming out thursday and i'll probably have a gameplay guide coming out this week probably on i don't know either seraphine or rumble let me know down in the comments below if you want seraphine um you know comment seraphine if you want uh vein comment vein so we'll see which one you guys want more and that'll be the deck that i put in the uh, i'll do the deck guide on this week i said it last week in my uh uh i did it last week in my five best decks or five new decks for the new patch but i'm focusing really hard on worlds i'm you know went back to competitor mode this last couple uh this last season top eight seasonals qualified for worlds now i'm practicing getting ready for worlds so making content you know five videos a week is going to be really hard for me so i've knocked it down to three so it's basically just going to be like one gameplay video uh plus the meta monday sweat thursday so let me know what you guys you what deck you guys want to see for that uh deck guide video for this week comment down below all that type of stuff join the discord link in the description below all that stuff really appreciate you guys but that's gonna be it i'll see you guys in the next video